Hey, welcome to another edition of Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, once again, we've gone back into our archives and pulled out some really neat projects we've done in the past. And one of them is a way to make your car stay pristine. Absolutely. It's called the car capsule. It's a great way to protect your investment. Let's check it out. You guys out there that have a classy car like this or any car that you store through the winter or want to keep nice and clean through storage, what we have here is the original car capsule. And you've seen this before. It's been around for a long time. And it does a great job. It keeps your car clean and also helps keep it from rusting and getting mold and mildew in there. But this has been around for a long time. But we got Phil Pataki here from Car Capsule. And Phil, welcome back to the show. I mean, nice to be here. What a nice piece. But you've made some improvements on that since. Yes, you? we have. We've uh, improved the seams. They're all welded seams, opposed to our old sewn seams. Mm -hmm. We went to a heavier zipper. Uh, improved the base mat. And most importantly, we came out with a better fan. The fan is all Velcro now. It attaches easy, and it's easy for replacement when necessary. And these been around for what, almost 20 years? Close to 20 years we're coming up on them, yeah. <laughs> Man, I see them all over the place. Yep. Now, you got the outdoor one. That's pretty new, isn't it? The outdoor one's brand new. And the difference is only it's, it's not clear, and it's rated for minus 20 below to 158 degree Fahrenheit. UV treatment. It has two fans. It blows twice as hard. Changes that much air. So whether you put a car in there, a boat in there, a tractor, it comes out the same way. And we make them in all sizes. When you got a fan moving the air through here, that really keeps it dry inside, doesn't it? Well, as long as you've got continuous airflow, you'll never ever get rust, mold, mildew, corrosion. Keeps it dry. Doesn't matter removing humidity. As long as that fans continuously blowing, it'll always be dry. Because the air is always leaking out the zipper. That's what I was going to say. You're always getting a little bit of air leaking out the zipper, so you always ca yep. keep it replacing it. Absolutely. Now, look at this thing. Well, this is our new one. This is the first time it's ever been seen. This is the showcase by Car Capsule. And this thing inflates in about two and a half minutes, just the way you see it. Once it's fully inflated, you're done. Those tubes are self-supporting, will hold this thing up. Oh. And then you can pull your car in. It's the guy that wants to drive in and out, you know, get in easy out. Got side doors on both sides. It's got a full overhead door. And it utilizes the same 12 volt fan for the air circulation. This is incredible. This is like an inflatable garage, a regular showcase, huh? Yeah, it's a showcase. Yeah. yeah, and you can go in through the sides like this. And of course, you got your opening up there. And that is working pretty darn nice. So you can take the car in and out, in and out, and it stays up. Stays up. All right, here's one of the things I really like to see. And you know, people come up, they're always touching this thing. You want to see how strong this is? You can pull on it, do this. You're not going to hurt it. But this is what's really impressive. With about a five pound, you even put a 10 pound sledgehammer on that, and you don't have to worry about it. I think what we need to do is take the showcase, let's put a car inside it. Let's do it. Nice. Now this is what you ought to have at your place, Sam, for your cars. I need a bunch of these. <laughs> I need one for my dirt car, I can tell you that. Well, folks, there you have it. You got all different kinds of car capsules. You got the original, you got the one for outside, and this baby right here, I really like this. Yep. Time now for Brothers Truck Parts Project 72. Restoration tips and techniques for a 1972 Chevy Suburban with Sam and Steve Flanders. Welcome to another installment of Brothers Project 72. Last week we took out this old instrument cluster to tell us some of the options we have and a great way to go. We've got Steve Flanders here from Brothers Truck Parts. Steve, tell us all about this thing. This is pretty nasty. That one's nasty. Time's taking its toll on that. Yep. Got some modifications from previous owners. <laughs> what we're going to do today is we're going to put in the uh, tack conversion that Brothers makes. Uh -huh. Uh, we offer a tack conversion or we offer all the parts to put a stock one back together if you don't want to do tack. This will give you the housing with the cutout for the tack, give you a factory style tack, factory style printed circuit, brand new lens, and uh, we're going to get a brand new bezel in there too to make this all shiny so it goes with the rest of our interior. Okay, first thing we're going to do is what, take this apart? We're going to have to take that apart. Got a few nuts that retain the uh, printed circuit board to the gauges, and of course take out all your bulb sockets, then you can lift the old printed circuit board up. Now that we're done with that, we take these gauges out because we're going to reuse the fuel gauge, speedometer, the uh, temperature gauge, 
oil pressure gauge and ammeter gauge. Right. We're gonna put those back into the new housing. Okay, so once we get all those out, we transfer them to the new housing, and then of course, we'll put the new circuit board on. Right. right. And once the housing is all assembled, get all your gauges in, all your bulbs, put all your screws back together, now we're ready to put it onto the bezel. Once we put it back onto the bezel, we're gonna drop in the lens. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned that we should wipe those fingerprints off. Yeah, clean rag, something. You know, you're gonna get fingerprints on it. Clean it off, shut it down inside, put all the retaining screws on the outside. Absolutely. And then we've got our finished product. We get to turn it over and see what it looks like. All right, we've got it all plugged in. And of course, when you do the tack conversion, it comes with a harness, you pick up power. This goes to your coil, it's long enough. And you even have a factory grommet going through the firewall. That's right. Let's see what we did here, see how it looks. Awesome. Yep, looks fantastic. Boy, that really freshens it up. Well, this is all set to go in the truck. Make sure you tune in next week for another installment of the Brothers Project 72, where we'll put our instrument cluster in, our dash pad, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll be back with more Motorhead Garage after this. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by BrothersTrucks.com, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. UTV Tech, power performance protection. Shark Hide Metal Protectant, one great product, thousands of uses. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, you know, a lot of us out there have pickup trucks, me included. And for you folks that got a Toyota truck, Toyota Racing Development's got a great way to increase its performance. We got this 2013 Toyota Tundra here, 5.7 V8 in it. We're gonna add a little bit more performance to this truck. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna install, first of all, a TRD air intake system on it. And it's pretty simple to do. This is something you can do right in your garage or in your yard. Bolts right in, you take off the old one put in a new one. I'll show you exactly what we're doing here. There you go, buddy. Okay, Sam's got this off now. We've got the air filter out of here. And they'll explain a little bit more about this. We've got Jamie Sutherland here from TRD. And Jamie, come on in and explain to us what you guys have done now to make this a lot more powerful. What we've got here is a, a larger intake system here. This, this bigger filter, as you can tell, is a whole lot bigger than that little one there that comes. No it's question lot, about it. A lot less restrictive. It also has an intake flow accelerator right here. And what that does right there is it really speeds up that airflow into the engine. So you're going to get a cooler, dense air, which, as you know, increases your horsepower. Yeah, it's like a Venturi effect. Exactly. Here, it? Just like yeah. your carburetor. Air going down, yep. speeds it right on through. But this is a real piece right here. You can see a big difference. Let me turn this around so folks can get an idea exactly how much larger this is. So you got more area there, you get more air in, more performance. Right, right? exactly. And if it's like most of the things I've ever put on on a Toyota, it'll bolt right in. There's no fitting on these things. And it also has a little filter minder, so it'll fit in here. This will allow you to see how much dirt is accumulated in this filter. It right. gives you an idea when you need to clean it. So this is a pretty nice deal. This is what You'll find this like in all the big heavy trucks, too. Won't exactly. You? We got these here, too. All this is made by you guys? Exactly. This is a red powder-coated uh, air intake tube, but it really, if you can see the one that Sam took off the truck, it's this is a lot less restrictive. So Again, everything is about efficiency and getting it into the engine as quickly as possible so that we make more power. Good deal. Well, let's go ahead and get these things on. We'll see what kind of power we can make out of this thing. All right, when you take out your lower part of your box, which we're going to use over, it's held on by two screws, two six millimeter screws with 10 millimeter heads plugged in the fender. This is the stock unit that's on there. You pop that off. Now, in the kit from TRD, you're going to get this unit. It's an air accelerator. It's gonna go right back on, it's keyed, so you can't put it on wrong, clips in place. And what this is, this is Venturi design, so it's gonna accelerate the incoming air. Anytime you accelerate air, you drop the temperature, more dense, you have better cylinder filling. I can put this back on, bolt it in place, and we're ready for the air cleaner. All right, now one of the things you want to do is on the old filter, there's a gasket that goes around here. You want to take that off and put that around the new filter like so, and then you're in business. Okay, Sam. Here it is. Drop this in here. There you go. Now I need the top. Now you're cooking with gas, buddy. Something else too in this uh, housing, you know, there's another filter in here. 
just extra protection on this. Now, before you put this on, right here you got a place, there's a boss here, that's for your little mass airflow sensor that you got to take off the original air box and put that on. You're going to have wires and tubes that go up to here, but look in here at your throttle body, there's your throttle flap. This is a bi-directional DC motor, this is drive-by wire. Do not stick your finger down there and move your throttle flap. You break the motors and you're done. That's a very expensive unit. You have a temptation to push on it. Don't do that, you'll kill it. Hi, right, Davey, I need the mass airflow sensor out of another air box. Okay, let me take that off. What you want to do is remove your sensor and transfer that over to your new housing, which I'm doing right here. All right, now, you get these two coupling hoses. Now, we got a little bellows on them. Put that on your throttle body. Tighten your clamp. Make sure you get it nice and square. Then we have this nice intake tube that comes with TRD's kit. Now, you got a hose here. This comes off the regulator, plugs onto there. This one comes off the road draft or PZV system. That slides up on there, and it's got a little spring-loaded clamp. Just make sure you get your hoses on right. Now, you see this also, it has a steep angle, which means that your engine cover is going to hit, but we got spacers in the kit to raise this up a bit so it's going to fit when we're all done. Now we're ready to put the top of the air box on. All right, bud, here you go. Slide this on. There we go. Yeah, there we got it. It's off. on. Yeah, I'm okay, on. Okay, now let me go ahead and lock this down. Now I won't tighten this yet until you're all done. Make sure your clamps are good all the way around, nice and square, so they'll clamp the bellows tight. You don't want any intake leaks between the mass airflow sensor and the throttle plate, because anything that leaks in there will not be measured by the sensor. Where's our harness for our mass airflow sensor? There it is. Put that right in here. And the last thing to put on there is our filter monitor. Now this has just a little grommet that goes on there. And slide that in. You got this nice intake. You're going to get about eight horsepower, about seven and a half foot pounds of torque. Bolt on in no time. You can do it yourself. And there you go. What we have here is a stainless steel exhaust system from TRD. Jamie, tell me about this thing. What kind of power are we gaining? Well, we usually get about six horsepower and close to about 10 foot pounds of torque with it. Wow, six horsepower. 10 foot-pounds of torque. Remember, torque is what shoves you down the road. And this kit comes complete. Tell me about these mufflers. The muffler kit that's on the Tundra now is a really big, boxy muffler. This is a true dual exhaust. Mm -hmm. You've got dual in, dual out, and that relieves a lot of that back pressure. It gets us that low-end torque that we're looking for. Great. So you get great sound with no droning. Beautiful polished stainless tips with rolled edges. Nice welding. You get a complete kit. Brackets, hangers, hardware. We even get an additional heat shield. It's a pretty nice kit. Let's see how Davey's making out. What we're doing is we're going to drop the exhaust system. Now, we're changing this over. It's a cat-back system, so it makes it pretty easy, and especially when it's a brand new truck, it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. Let me get this down. All right, we put these in. Make sure your tips are lined up. This kit fits well, it looks good, and it's gonna add the performance you need from TRD. There you see it. Here you have an actual true dual exhaust conversion. Pretty nice, Sam. Absolutely, and these flanges don't rotate. They're welded on the pipe, so it positions the tailpipe tips perfectly with the exact same clearance on the body. Nice job. And a nice thing, bolts right up. Right. We're gonna take a short break. We got a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage. Stick around. Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Hey, welcome back. You know, Sam, trying to take care of an aluminum trailer or keep your aluminum polished is always tough to do. Absolutely. Here's a great way to clean and protect your aluminum from corrosion. Well, Sam brought in his aluminum trailer today, and guess what he wants us to do? Fix it and clean it up for him. That's right. How much money have you spent on billet polish? How many times have you had your hands black? And you know, when you polish up this aluminum, it looks good for a little period of time. Exactly. You know, the problem is, it's kind of like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. Once you start, you get it all done. By the time you're done, you start over again and keep exactly. doing it. Well, we found a way that you can polish this out and then keep it looking good for a long, long time. 
And what we have right over here, this is our friend Clint Bland from Flatwater Products, and they make Morning, shark hide. And this is a product that we found that will clean that up very, very well. Clint, tell me, what is the first step Sam's going to have to do with this? Well, first he's going to have to take care of the oxidation. It's something that forms normally on aluminum. It's mm -hmm. a natural formation that protects it from the elements. Well, he's got to get rid of that first before we're going to try to polish it. And what we use for that is our shark hide aluminum cleaner. It's a very, very powerful blend of acids and surfactants, soaps, and clinging agents. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we'll dilute that with water, and that will etch and clean the surface. That's oh. the starting point. Okay, so you put it here in a spray bottle. You bet. Let me give this to Sam. Now, what's the trick on this? Well, what you want to do is apply it to dry aluminum only. The best thing to do is do it with an, uh, an adjustable tip and you start from the bottom up. You adjust that tip to a fine, fine mist. But Chuck, this is an acid, so you want to make sure you have gloves on? Absolutely. I can see it foaming up. Right. You would normally do this outside because you want to hose it off with a hose, rinse it off. We're going to use a bucket and a rag. Okay, and there you go. That's all you need to do. Now, what you're supposed to do now, now that you've got this reaction, it'll form this real thin, dense layer of foam. Right. Now that's actually cleaning and etching the aluminum. Now you'll notice little spots starting to appear as gravity takes over and starts to take this down. When you see these little spots appear, give them a real light mist and keep it under that blanket of foam for anywhere from three to five minutes, depending on how bad, how severe the aluminum is. Mm -hmm. And that's all you do. You don't touch it, you don't scrub it. There's no contact involved. Let it do its business, rinse it off, and you're done. All right, you're making Sam's job too easy. Now, while he's rinsing that off, Clint, what's the next step now once he has that all cleaned off? Well, he had a couple options. He could have left it the etched off-white finish, but yeah. Sam's elected to polish it. He wants to see a nice, bright, reflective finish. So for that, we use our Shark Hide Metal Polish. This polish is a one-step polish mm -hmm. as opposed to a multi-step. We've got what's called diminishing particulates in this. It'll start off a very aggressive, abrasive particle. But the more you work it with friction, it begins to crack down. Those abrasive so particles get smaller, smaller, they get smaller, smaller and smaller yeah. until finally you're left with literally a rouge to get that nice. That okay, nice now thing. how much effort does it take to do this? Quite a bit. There's no such thing as an easy polish job. I mean, it all takes elbow. He's going to be looking at me to do that. Let's, well, let's get him started on that. So do you use just like any other billet polish, I guess? A lot of rubbing? Oh, absolutely. A lot, right. of, a lot of pressure, a lot of rubbing both directions with the diamonds. You have to go both directions to get up to it. Diamond plate is tough. I'll tell you what, a little tip is, and I don't have any, but if you have a piece of small piece of carpet, it really works good as an applicator. I'll go ahead and polish this up and we'll see what it looks like when we're all done. All right, now you can see how nice that looks where I polished it. And you know, you've all polished billet aluminum. All that black oxidation that comes off, you got it in your hands, you got it on the rag. Before you apply the final coat, here's a good tip. You want to get that oxidation out of the metal. This is just everyday lacquer thinner. Saturate it real good because you want the thinner to work, you know, not the rag, and just rub it on here, okay? And what you want to do, and you'll know when you clean because, see, it's getting black. Ball this up so you can dispose of it, and then just go ahead and rub this all down good, and it might leave a little film behind. We're going to take care of that when we put the shark hide on it. Let that dry. Now we're ready for our final coat. When I get this all polished up looking the way I want it, I want it to stay that way for years. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go away, we got a lot more coming here at Motorhead Garage. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Power Curve, Extreme Performance Products. Sprint Booster, more power on demand. Car Capsule, protecting vehicles for over 20 years. And by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, I sure hope you've enjoyed going down memory lane in these archives as much as Dave and I have had, reviewing them, looking at them, and picking out the ones we wanted to bring to you. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up with a segment on how to protect the moving metal parts in your vehicle. I'm going to show you something here that you're not going to believe. You know, you got your air conditioning on, you want to keep it cool. This does a pretty good job, but there's a lot of additional heat that's generated by the compressor and the metal, you know, from friction inside. Well, we can eliminate a lot of that with this called power curve. What this is, this is a metal treatment. All I'm going to do is inject that right into the air conditioning system. How are we looking there, Sammy? 39 degrees, go for it, Davey. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
All right, ready? Yep. 33. Thirty-two degrees. We come down from 38, 37, 38 to 32. Pretty good. All right, now what Dave did was he put in the power curve metal conditioner. You can see it dropped the temperature at the vents because it, it's a friction reducer made the compressor more efficient. We got Will Gober here, he's the president of the power curve. He's got a demonstration. So show us what you got here, buddy. You bet. So we're putting some regular motor oil in here. Straight motor oil. Okay. Now both these surfaces here are bearings, just straight bearings. Okay, that's a good hard metal. Good hard metal. All right. And for every pound of pressure on up here, puts 100 pounds down here. Ammeter shows how much power it takes to overcome the friction it's generated. Okay. Straight motor oil, about 15, 1600 pounds, loses all of its viscosity. All right. Now what? has happened in that short time is we've got a real rough surface here. Mm -hmm. Gall in the metal. Gall that metal out pretty hard. Now what we've got here, this is our XP-12. It's a metal treatment. No solids, no chlorinates, no Teflon. About 160 degrees, the pores in the metal start to open up. And when they do, this penetrates into the metal. It reduces the friction by at least 75%. And right there, you're looking at 65 or 7,500 pounds of pressure. Ammeter barely moved. The ammeter hadn't moved. That's amazing. Billy does a great job. Thanks for the dem demonstration. Thanks for showing us your product. We're out of time. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time here at Motorhead Garage.